Today, we're interviewing AMD's Extreme Overclockers to learn about how they've been secretly breaking world records for months. We'll learn about new settings, the return of liquid nitrogen, extreme overclocking, and the upper bound of Zen 4's capabilities. These guys are Amit and Bill, and they used a 7950X to break world records for CPU performance. Now, in this fun and educational video, we get to learn from them. Now we're really going for it. 100, one negative, 145. More LN2. All right, there we go. Woo! Yeah, there we go. 48,000. Easy. Before that, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. We use Squarespace for our own GN store and juggle complex multi-piece orders all the time with it. Squarespace makes it fast for us to roll out new products with detailed pages full of galleries, videos, and descriptors. It's also useful for your own resume sites, for photographer or project portfolios, or for starting your new small business idea. There's never been a better time to try and start your new business than right now. And we can vouch that Squarespace makes it easy. Visit squarespace.com slash gamersnexus to get 10% off your first purchase with Squarespace. So I'm joined by Bill and Amit, who joined me previously. Yeah. Can we go over the setup first? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you want to walk through the prep, man? Yeah. Sure. So the bottom of the board on the on the top two thirds uh -huh. is just Vaseline, right? And then the same on the top, right? And then you're running a heater? Yeah, I've got two heaters. Okay. Uh, so those plug into PCI and these are um, like the Kingpin, they're like 70 watt or something like this, right. and they have automatic thermostat. Yeah, 7950X okay. in both of these guys. And uh, everything's still lidded, like from factory? You haven't, yeah, sure. you haven't modified it? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Okay. yeah. okay, so this one's the ASRock Tai Chi. Um, this will be the flagship, like the X670E, mm -hmm. right? Right. Um, same thing here, but the Asus uh, version. And then you've ripped off part of the <laughs> right. chipset yeah. cover. Yeah, <laughs> Nick yeah, Shee's not going to be happy with me, but um, <laughs> with, uh, yeah. So there was uh, a heat pipe connected all the way to here that get, wraps around back to the front. You can see where the heat pipe right, was. Right. Back, yeah, yeah, so. It's, it's to actually to, to uh, insulate the board. So there's no VRM cooler yeah, on it yeah, now at all, yeah. right? And that, that was all kind of one assembly with a long heat pipe. Cool, uh, and then video out, you're just doing basic display, I mm -hmm. guess, to, yeah. is yeah. this one on, on board? That yeah. one's on board, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So we were benching with that one was on board. Right. This one, because we needed the two monitors, we went with the, with the DGPU. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, this, can we do a, you want to do like a, a, a quick run, initial run, and sure. set yeah. the stage. All right. First thing is clearing out any extra ice. Right. Don't get any any. Uh, I'm very straight flakes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I'll cover this back up actually. So was the painters tape stock or? Uh, it's just because uh, <laughs> no, we don't need any litigation. Not <laughs> no, <okay. laughs> We're trying to officially get that sorted out, but. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. So we're at negative eighty three. Okay. Right? So we're gonna. We're going to take it down to at least negative 120 range, yeah. and then that'll mm -hmm. get us started. So, right. Rise you know. and Master on the screen over here. Oh, yeah, yeah, here. yeah. It should be mirrored. Um, yeah, so, so here's Rise and Master, and you can see um, oh, here's yeah. the 16 cores. What's the clock right now that you're running? Five gig all cores. Five gig all core, okay. Yep. And then so temperature readouts on this side. So, I'm going to move yeah, this. Yeah, you can yeah, go ahead and read it. Yeah. What is the. Uh, who makes this? Uh, Jan Sandstrom, Elmore. Oh, Elmore makes this one. Yeah, yeah. Yep. this is nice. He makes no, a lot of good kit. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Elmore makes good stuff. Yep. So we've got a K-type thermocouple here. This is running into the pot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. yep. Right on top of the lid. Yeah. Yep. Right. So that's your pot temperature. Okay. I'm going to so cool it I'll down to about minus one twenty. I'm just going to go for five five to kind of do a little warm up run, and then we'll leave Ryzen Master open for now. Sure. Do you mm -hmm. find there's a meaningful influence with it open once you're at the edge? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not, yeah. Not if we're really placebo, benching for uh, competitive. Me right. Meaningful when you need those last few points. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So we're at negative 123. Yep. We're running 1.52 volts um, and we're at 5.5. And this is R23. Yep. Current, uh, current records do you have off the top of your head? Yeah. Yeah. 40,421. Okay, and that's on 12900KS yep. with yep. LN2. With LN2, okay. yes, seven gigahertz. Right. <laughs> Forty thousand four twenty one is okay. So that was easy. Forty one thousand one forty nine. <laughs> All right. All right. At five five. All right. right. Yeah. So that beats the current world record, um, but I think we can do a little better. You guys just gonna sit on a bunch of scores to upload when 
people start uploading uh, the hardware I'm, I'm starting to see photos from folks that have parts in hand now, <laughs> and I know I yeah. can't compete with oh, some okay. of these folks. Yes, <laughs> now, yes. yes I'm going to release some scores, um, right. but I think they'll probably be releasing them like at the same moment. Right, so, right, right. yeah. So this was something that was previously hard to achieve on Zen 3. Um, some parts could do like 6.1, right? Ah. But those were kind of special parts. So here, this is kind of easy, 6 gig. So this is where you would start having some difficulty on uh, previous architectures? Are you, no, before this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Like in right. Zen 3, you have to bin, you know, bin a bunch of parts, right. finds one that, and then yeah. really tune them. Yeah, I had, I had a couple parts that could do 6.1, just barely, and a lot of the records on 5950X were, yeah. Okay, should we push it? Yeah. Okay. So we already hit 45,000. Um, yeah, 45, 146. Yeah. Okay, so I'm, I'm just leaving the voltage alone and we'll kind of see what's the limit for 1.52 volts. Not right. for any special reason, but that's just what we've been doing. So it's 6225 megahertz all core. All right. We'll keep, try and keep it around minus 140 now. You can see it's drawing about 440 watts from the wall. We did have a crash. Uh, All right. <laughs> so it was at what, 6225 or something? I was at like yeah. 6.325 when okay. it crashed, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we were running earlier at, uh, we were running Cinebench at 6.45. Right, so. so minus 142 currently. As the day progressed for all of this, AMD's team did end up hitting a world record, and it did so with a 7950X marking 48,235 points in Cinebench R23 with a 6.45 gigahertz all-core overclock using a Reactor 2.1 liquid nitrogen pot, the X670E Hero, and then 32 gigabytes of G-Skills RAM. This ends up being about 16% higher than the previous liquid nitrogen overclocking record, and that was set on a 12900KS. Throughout this overclocking endeavor, we did a lot of Q&A with Bill and Amit, and so the remainder of this video will have some questions and answers about key points for Ryzen that may apply to you even if you're not overclocking, because we get into some voltages and other specifics about how the new CPUs work. Here's a cut of all of that together. We're just the... Um the CPU sensor these days, where does that kind of stop? Is it still zero-ish? Uh, the sensor goes to minus 49. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah right. minus 49. But. And then um, for cold, how is it running for, like, have you gotten the full pot? Or <laughs> yeah. We, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, building We were this. running full pot last night on accident. <laughs> right. Because like, we were just doing debug tuning and just, you know, checking out the behavior. B Bill, Bill said I had poor uh, control of my <laughs> right. building poor the L2. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but we ended up running full pot. So, and this is a 16 core also, right? So right. that means it yep. has two, you know, GMI links out to the CCD. Yep. Right. And that's kind of historically been kind of the problem area for running on LN2. Right. Um, so what we're seeing now, um, it seems to be a little more behaved. I don't, I haven't tested just an enormous number of parts. Does, in your experience with XOC on this, does it behave any differently if you use onboard versus card in a slot? Um, they're very similar. We've gotten to nearly the same temperatures. Right. There are some uh, things you have to tweak with the iGPU to okay. make sure it, because it, it's also getting cold. So it's the same as like Raven Ridge and Picasso and other APUs, right? So uh, we'll, uh, have an update later that will give you, um, so that when you set LN2 mode, that it's going to set all those things for you, so you don't have to worry about right. it. Right, okay. Yep. Uh, all so core. Yeah, and so we yep. were talking earlier, um, for anyone who in the audience hasn't watched any of our XOC stuff in the past, uh, I always struggled with Ryzen Master because the 1.55 volt yeah. limit on right. core, and like, to be perfectly clear, <laughs> That's enough for not this, right? Like that's, yeah, that's not a valid complaint yeah. for if you're using it normally. <laughs> but for this, it was a problem for me. I know yeah. there was a utility um, that could help with that. So yeah, if folks are still facing that issue, right? You can go in the BIOS and actually set um, a positive voltage offset. So normally what I would do mm. is like 100 millivolts. And then when you set 155 in Ryzen Master, you're getting 165. Yeah. So okay. that's the trick for that. So right now, the way that this sits, um, Ryzen Master doesn't actually have a limit um, for the voltage, or it's the, it's the limit of the VRM, right? Right. Yeah. So that's one of the changes going to uh, Ryzen 7000 is SVI 3, and so that has a higher higher limit. So. It, that'll mean that the motherboard vendors they can pick what they want the highest voltage capability to be, right? Okay. And then we hook that into LN2 mode so that Ryzen Master won't even let you apply those higher voltages unless you're in right. LN2 mode. 
Yeah, if you, um, yeah, if I hover over it, it says max 2.8 volts. Yeah, <laughs> so, it's a little high. Yeah, yeah. So you <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely don't want to be doing that. Um, We're gonna fix that. Yeah. And another thing that's interesting, it's in um, 50, oh, sorry, five millivolt increments now. Oh wow. I remember okay. before yeah, it was right. at, at six and a quarter. Yeah, yeah. 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 So no, now it's that's good. Yeah, so it's nice to. What um? So what sort of frequency earlier? Um, during the demo, you guys were up to at least here. You were yeah. at like 63, 6400? Yeah, 6.4 megahertz. I think. Yeah. Voltage at that point running? 1.52 volts. Okay. Yep. We've been just kind of keeping it there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it does that when we open Task Manager, and I don't know what that is. <laughs> With a flicker? Yeah. 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 That's a new thing. So, yeah. I'll just leave that open for a minute and. Yeah. Okay. And so, actually, what am I do? Uh, we'll do actually, this. Bill, first, in Rise Master, why don't you go to home and show them where things are set? Right. So, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, here. Yeah. You should be able to see like mem clock. Oh, yeah. So, you can see we have U clock, mem clock, right. F clock, all at one to one to one. Um, yep. I'm, I don't know if that's something that we touched on earlier, but it's not um, strictly necessary to have fabric clock at a one to one ratio anymore. Yeah. Right? Someone earlier said uh, like auto one to one. Auto one to one. Now. one now. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the uh, F or U clock and MEM clock, mm -hmm. those are the ones that you optimally want to have one to one. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but, yeah, we have. But basically, optimization. you want to push everything as high as you can. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and we talked about this previously, but just for people watching. So, there was, I would mentioned that uh, to, to hit a certain temperature and push frequency beyond a certain point on previous parts, you'd have to bring down infinity fabric yeah. to like right. 1400, 1400, 1467, right. something like that. Yep. Uh, how is how is that behavior now? Yeah, so right now we're running 1800 yeah, uh, right. on the GMI. There's a lot right. less sensitivity yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Is, are you still coming down relative to yeah, the extreme cold? Yeah, I see that. I think that system is running 3,000. It's okay. running. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The one so, over there right. is actually running 3,200. Still yeah. pretty good though. It's 1,800. Still pretty yeah, yeah, 1,800 is fine. And, yeah. you know, especially for what we're doing. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. And, uh, and it's another thing you can, you can tweak with and play with, right? Right. Yeah. So, yeah, because uh, one of the things that you use is VDDG. I don't know if you remember that. Yes, it's, I do yes, remember that. Yes. Yeah. That so, was critical, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, that was one of the. Yeah. That was one of the first points where I'd asked you for help last yep. time. Yep. Because mm -hmm. I got stuck. I don't remember if it was like five, 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 eight, yeah. something like that. Yep. And uh, VDDG, VDDIO, I think, yep. is what I needed to start tweaking right. to get for yeah. that. Yep. And now there's VDD miscellaneous. VDD miss, yeah. Okay. So VDDG um, was related to VDDIO, now it's related ah. to VDD misc, right? Okay. So you just need to make sure it's set higher um, than right. what you're sending VDDG to. So. And yeah. on this machine, when you were fully uh, clocked up earlier, I guess, were you at like 1.3? Yeah, I think miscellaneous. Yeah, I think it should be. Yeah, uh, 1.3 1 1 3 or 1.35. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. is way more than what you would do, you know, on air and water for sure. So, at, at yeah. what point do you start? Um, I guess if you walk me through the process you guys use when you start working on like a new chip for the first time, do you do you isolate sort of one set of variables? Do you start changing everything because you're experts mm -hmm. in it? You know, what do you, where do you go? I mean, I mean, Bill, you can talk through. So, I mean, historically, <clears throat> it was it, w it was like you said, right? The fabric cloth and the sensitivity there. Right. Um, and so I have notebooks with just pages and pages and pages of voltage schmoo, right? Uh -huh. On VDDG, right? Two CCD, two voltages a piece, uh -huh. right? That's four voltages. And with sensitivity, you know, at six millivolts could make or break it, right? right. So you really have to, yeah. So with this, um, I haven't had to do that. Um, so now, once we dial it up, right? Because we're running like 2200 F clock over there. Uh -huh. Right, so once we get to the point where we're trying to see how fast can F clock go on LN2, then, then I think we'll revisit VDDG, mm -hmm. so. Cool, um, and, and uh, for, I guess um, at this point, is it just VDD MISC that you're, like, has it supplanted VDDG, or you're? It feeds VDDG. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. yeah. so those two are related. Yeah. You still have VDD SOC. Okay. That's also still important. Right. Um, and then obviously the core voltage. Is VDIM, so. uh, if you're doing memory stuff, yeah. Is VDIM different to work with than DDR4? Uh, it's about I, the same. We're at okay. 1.4, I think. Okay. 1.35, 1.4 yeah. for the DDR4. Yeah, the menu, yeah. like, by default, it sets both sides of, um, of the PHI at the mm -hmm. same voltage, but we do allow you to control it, so you can, you can Okay. You could have them at different voltages if you right. if you wanted. Yeah. 69, is, is the behavior similar on like a 7600x to a 7950x in terms of like how it responds to cold and how the the frequency uh, the point at which the frequency is stable? 
does it kind of behave the same way, or are they different when you overclock them? It, it, it's a little easier doing the six core or the okay. eight core because yeah. there's the one GMI link, and because uh, the less cores with the heat less density to control, yeah. yeah, you can actually run faster. So that makes sense. And but, if you but, need but, to but, dial it in, yeah. that's two voltages instead of four, right? right. And of yeah. course, Threadripper, you have eight CCD, yes. and right. we allow you to yeah. do this, right? So that's 16 voltages. Right. You could be tuning all day, right? Yeah. But the silicon is faster on, in the 7950X. When you first get these, this is more behind the scenes question, when you first get these in the OC lab, and the only people who've really, I guess at this point, kind of worked on it would be whoever does initial validation, oh. architects, <laughs> where do you start? You know, like, <laughs> Does anyone give you guidance, or is it up to you to figure out? It's up to us. Yeah, like does, does Mike Clark come in and say, <laughs> if he behaves this way, you should do this thing? No, he has no, no idea. No. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you I mean, guys did what? Yeah, yeah. What the hell? That's yeah. yeah, so I mean, like, I worked on the core design for, for the clocking and the power management. So, right, okay. so with that, I have enough background. Um, Okay, so we uh, we have to get out of the way of the demos, but we have some footage from earlier where they were doing a demo for a group of press, and I forget what the score you hit was. It was like 48? Yeah, 40, yeah, a little over 48,000. Something like yeah, that? Yeah. yeah. So really, I'm really excited for overclocking on these, and uh, and I don't know, hopefully we could do like an OC battle or something oh, at some yeah. point. That, yeah, hey, let's do it. Yep, <laughs> yep. Get in so, touch, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank right. you guys yeah, for right. joining. Yes, thank, good you. To see you. thank you for the explanation. Thank you. All right, yeah. we'll see you all next time.